Good afternoon. I'd like to welcome everyone to our Wednesday night doctrine study here at Beverly Hills Baptist Church. If you are a guest, we thank you for tuning in. Tonight, we're in part 62 in our last doctrine study series in the doctrine of ecclesiology, which is the doctrine study of the church. And to conclude tonight's study in the doctrine and study of the church, we're going to look at the church ordinances of baptism and the Lord's Supper. An ordinance in the, is a Christian rite and is associated with the tangible elements of water, bread, and juice. That is a celebration by the church of Jesus Christ. An ordinance is something that we as Baptists and as believers carry out as commands from Jesus throughout from the New Testament and throughout all of church history. The term ordinances is closely associated with the word sacraments, which is an outward and visible sign of an inward and invisible grace. A simpler way to say it is that they are an outward sign of an inward change. So as we look at baptism and the Lord's Supper tonight, I want you to keep in mind that what they are and what they represent as ordinances given to us by Jesus is they are an outward sign of an inward change that has taken place within the believer. Christians of various denominations cherish baptism and the Lord's Supper in some form or fashion. Baptist beliefs uh, about baptism and the Lord's Supper are different from those of many denominations. And we're going to take a look at just how those differ here in a little bit. Now, what we must understand with the ordinances of baptism and the Lord's Supper, first and foremost, is that they are symbols. Baptists usually use the term ordinances rather than sacraments when referring to baptism and the Lord's Supper. Even if sacraments is used, it is never intended to apply that either of these two are necessary for a person to be saved. Baptism and the Lord's Supper, uh, as we understand it, and as Baptists understand that through scriptural teaching, it is not necessary to be baptized nor partake in the Lord's Supper in order to be saved. Salvation is through faith alone, through Christ alone, and that is how we obtain our salvation through Jesus and Him alone not through works, which would be considered the Lord's Supper or baptism. Baptists consistently declare that baptism and the Lord's Supper are symbols and are not necessary for salvation and that they are nonetheless a significant part of Baptist practice and worship. Though they are not necessary for salvation, they are very significant in the Baptist way of life of practice and, and worship. Because baptism and the Lord's Supper are symbolic, the use of the proper symbols is important. Baptism symbolizes the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus that has made possible through for our salvation. Baptism also symbolizes that a person through faith in Christ has passed from death to life and that this person has identified with Christ's death and resurrection. Our scriptural report for that can be found in Romans 6, 3-5 and Colossians 2, 12. Now I'd like to take a, a little in-depth look at baptism and a little in-depth look at the Lord's Supper. Our scripture for baptism comes to us from Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 and 20. Jesus says, And he came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Later, Paul writes in Romans chapter 6 and verse 4, We were buried therefore with him by baptism into his death, and in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in the newness of life. Believers' baptism is the practice of baptizing only those people who have made a public and conscious profession of the Christian faith. Believers' baptism is clearly taught in Scripture as evidenced by Jesus, the apostles, and many others. In particularly, the book of Acts records many such baptism. Usually this baptism is by immersion, and only the total immersion of a person in water adequately symbolizes this death, burial, and resurrection. As Southern Baptists, we hold to uh, baptizo uh, is through immersion, uh, not through sprinkling or pouring of water, but through the complete immersion of the person. And again, that, that immersion is the only way that adequately symbolizes the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And now for the Lord's Supper, our scripture comes to us from 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 11, verses 23 through 26. Paul writes, For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he gave thanks, he broke it, and he said, This is my body which is for you, do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he also took the cup after the supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. 
Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat of the bread and you drink of the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. 1 Corinthians eleven twenty three through 26 Likewise, using the correct elements in the Lord's Supper with a biblical understanding of them is so important. Jesus institutes the Lord's Supper at his last meal with his disciples as part of the Jewish Passover. Unleavened bread and the fruit of the vine were used as part of this meal. Jesus indicates that the bread was symbolic of his body and the fruit of the vine was symbolic of his blood. The unleavened bread symbolizes the purity of Christ, for he was without sin, and thus his body was an unblemished sacrifice for our sins. The juice from the crushed grapes symbolizes the blood that Christ shed for us. Now, in partaking of the bread and the cup, Christ's disciples are to remember his sacrifice on the cross of Calvary as he gave his body and shed his blood for our sins. Baptists believe that the Bible teaches that the elements used in the Lord's Supper are not literally the blood of Christ and the body of Christ, but they are symbols of his body and his blood. In eating of the bread and drinking of the cup, a person does not actually partake in Christ's flesh and blood. Rather, it is an opportunity to obey a command of which Christ has recalled his sacrifice to us and his presence with us and his certain return. We as Baptists do not hold to the doctrinal understanding of transubstantiation, which means the body and the blood, uh, the bread and the juice literally become the body and the blood of Christ. We do not hold to that. It's a symbolic view, a memorial view, as we remember the sacrifice that Christ put forth for us. In conclusion, I want us to understand this simply tonight in our short little study is that Baptists believe that Jesus gave two ordinances to be carried out by his church baptism and the Lord's Supper. Each of these is both symbolic and highly significant because each symbolizes the Christian message of grace and salvation and relates to other major Bible doctrines. That concludes our study tonight on baptism and the Lord's Supper. If you have any questions or would like to talk about this further, please uh, feel free to contact me. Uh, we are so blessed as the church to be able to partake in the baptism uh, of new believers and the Lord's Supper as we commune together. If you do not have a church family, we would love to have you come and join us and be a part of our family here at Beverly Hills. Let us close with a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you that we can gather here tonight to hear the teachings of your word and to understand better why we partake in the Lord's Supper and why we as believers uh, are baptized. We thank you that we can identify with you knowing that you are our Heavenly Father and our Savior. And we praise you and we thank you for all that you have done. And it is in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Until the Lord returns, I pray that he will watch over you, protect you, and keep you safe. God bless.